Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fuji Freedom Friday. Today's Hello. date. Hello, everybody. Today's date is the 21st of uh, October, 2016. That's right. Uh, Brother Marco sent us a link, and he informed us that Ray Yugen from Lighthouse Trails Research mm-hmm. passed away. I know. That He's, is so sad. Yeah, he died on October 16th. Ray Yugen was, I mean, this is a great loss for real Christianity. He was um, probably one of the last real biblically honest, biblically truthful people out there. Lighthouse Trails Research, um, great website, great organization. They've published and produced uh, books by Roger Oakland. We have that Mm -hmm. book, Faith Undone. Mm -hmm. Um, Roger Oakland was preaching the demise of the church, especially Calvary chapels. Yeah, He did a lot on the emerging church. Yeah, the emerging church. I remember hearing his stuff back in 2004. He was talking about it way back when when he's talking about how the church was going to emerge and was emerging with Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Um, And Ray Youngen, he did a lot about the um, New Age mm -hmm. creeping into the church. He talked about the Kundalini spirit and all that. He has um, at least two books that I know of. One is called A Time of Departing, and another one, For Many Shall Come in My Name. Both mm -hmm. are very, very good books. And we don't have any of his books, but we do have his DVDs. Yeah, we had his um, contemplative prayer. That was excellent. Yes, and then there was um, several other DVDs we have that were on mysticism mm-hmm. in the church and things like that. Very good. Um, and he's been talking about that a long time. Our good friend Karel Mastrishi, uh, Mastrishiana, mm-hmm. they published her book mm-hmm. out of India. And um, so anyway, what a great so it's loss! A great loss for us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. He's home with his. Uh, father but mm-hmm. um you know one of the one of the few left i mean this seems to be a pattern all the good preachers all the good people uh tend to be um missing disappearing mm. all right today's show is entitled the dark demonic times and the reason why we entitled it that is because well because we live in dark demonic times very dark demonic times and folks it's going to get worse i mean i'm telling you right now it's going to get so much worse quickly Mm -hmm. it's not going to take a long period of time it's ddt (laughs) yeah ddt dark demonic times and they're coming uh quickly upon us in waves Mm -hmm. waves it's just incredible the world we're living in Absolutely nuts. Uh, what is the killer clown craze? We're going to talk about that. Because mm-hmm. uh, we haven't really, you know, I've just made fun of killer clowns. But there's a real demonic force behind this. We're talking about stupid people that get killer clown tattoos. How dumb can you be? Mm. Talk about this bloody guy, this demoniac. Talk about this real demoniac who's all bloodied, bloodies himself up and attacks a couple. And this poor cop, this Chicago cop, female police officer, gets beat up because she is afraid to use force, deadly force or any force, yeah. upon this guy who is um, attacking her because she don't want to get in trouble. And that's, right. a, that's a bad man, mindset, to, mindset to be in, right. but it's part of the times, and it's, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Men, there was a study or something, a poll, I don't know. It said half of the men are shaving their legs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So men are becoming effete with little smooth legs. And then last but least, not least, we're going to talk about nine places of refuge. This article that talks about nine places of refuge that you can go in case of nuclear attack. World War Three. The only reason we're going to talk about it is because we're going to make fun of it because there is only one place to go. Mm-hmm. We'll tell you that. But they, they talk about nine places that are just totally useless that won't do you any good. But it's kind of funny yeah, to think how... Um, People are thinking. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ms. Kapow, without further ado, if you can without give Without further ado, this is my scripture. It's John three sixteen through 21. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that come does come to light, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Excellent. And that's what we're seeing here. Dark demonic times. The evil. Killer clowns. How many out there, raise your hand, love killer clowns? I don't, I don't. <laughs> this is from the Express in the UK. Hello, mate. Oh, no, that's Australian. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. What is the killer clown craze? Why are people wielding knives, scaring children and more? Apparently in Britain, it's really kind of out of control. Probably because they're not armed. Seriously. Mm-hmm. it's. It, I think it started here in the U.S. I, I really do. I think it started here and then kind of just went over there. And it is it is here in the U.S., but a lot of it is... It's like not real. Mm-hmm. They, they never, they haven't seen the clowns. They're just stories. Right here locally in Mesquite, we live in a little small city of about 16,000. Mm-hmm. It's pretty small for a city. And um, there was, it actually, a week ago or so, one of the schools, a high school, there was on uh, social media, they were all, the kids were all on Twitter. And they were talking about how the middle school here was locked down because of a killer clown sighting. Mm-hmm. So the police went out there, blah, blah, blah. There, there was there was no clown ever sighted. There was no, So it was just somebody who yeah. put that. A couple of people um, have also been arrested, investigated for uh, doing Facebook pages mm-hmm. and really nasty stuff. We're killer clowns. We're going to kill your children, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So it's like a bunch of bozos, you know, a mm-hmm. bunch of, you know, idiot kids. Right. I mean, just totally stupid kids. Mm-hmm. Um, that have no brains doing this stuff. That's what's been the case out here. I think one person did get hurt in a clown suit because he messed with the wrong person and he got his uh, clock cleaned. But here in Britain, I think, that's my uh, opinion, probably because they're not armed. They're doing a whole lot of this. Because out here, you're going to get shot. Yeah. You're going to get shot. You're going to get hurt. (laughs) In a lot of places. Here in America. But Britain is in the midst of a killer clown epidemic. This is so stupid. But it's demonic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely demonic. It just shows you how people are turning their whole lives and their whole hearts and whole souls, whole spirits. To darkness. To darkness. And this is an outgrowth of that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny to scare people. I hate that. Oh, yeah. I absolutely hate it. I don't like it. No. I don't like it at all. Mm Mm-mm. And you will get hurt. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you will. I mean, you can scare some children. You can scare some women. You can scare some some men, elderly men. You know. You know. You. But you, there's some people you can't. Right. They're just not gonna. They're gonna flip out. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna take it. And um, it's really dangerous for them. I'm just waiting for one of them to get whacked. Yeah, that's coming. I'm it is this coming. Up. Especially um because of the the article that we're reading. There's a pictures of clowns that look really evil. Oh yeah, they're, they're not Ronald McDonald clowns. No, these are these are very demonically, f- facially enhanced mm-hmm. clown masks. Yeah, yeah, this is very scary stuff, and it's hard to look at that and see the stupid kid behind the mask mm-hmm. and go, "There's just there's just an idiot kid behind there." Mm-hmm. You, can, it's hard to see that because you're just seeing the front of that mask. Sure, and this so, thing coming at you. I mean. Yeah, we expect people. To and then a lot of them are very aggressive. They're coming. Yeah. They're welding weapons. Mm-hmm. Dumb. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just dumb. So Britain is in the midst of a killer clown epidemic. Dozens of they call it pranks over the past week. Here's everything you need to know about the terrifying craze. Police have reported a swath of incidents. People dressed as scary killer clowns. Dozens of young children and members of the public have been 
left terrified. Schools have been forced to close. See how ridiculous that is? That's just nuts. And some of these crazy clowns are wielding knives, chainsaws, and other weapons. Though most of the attacks have been simple pranks, one man was left permanently disfigured after a clown slashed his hand with a kitchen knife. See? So right there tells you that you can't just assume... Yeah, that they're not going to hurt you, you know? Yeah, that's not really some crazy psychopath. And then a lot of these these, uh, crazy clowns are following children to school. Yes, that's not right. That's not right. I, I, I wouldn't like that. Or following women around, you know? Thinking that's funny? No, I don't think so. Totally demonically inspired. And that's the dark the dark times we're living in. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is just, it just shows you what has happened to the human genome. Being yeah. infested by aliens and, and, and demonic entities. And poor Ronald McDonald says the terrifying craze has become so severe that fast food chain McDonald's has sent its mascot, Ronald McDonald, into hiding. In one chilling episode, children, two children on their way to school were followed by a killer clown said to have been brandishing a knife. Police in County Durham are trying to locate the man who was dressed in gray track suit bottoms, a multicolor top, and a clown mask. Chasing kids with a knife. Can you imagine you were the parent and you saw that? There have been a number of similar incidents across the U.K., um, with famous Valley Police receiving 14 complaints in just 24 hours this past weekend. Clown sightings have also been reported in Brigham, Leeds, and Manchester. And police have warned that those joining in with the craze could end up committing an offense. Potential pranksters have been warned to consider their own safety after a video emerged of a hammer-wielding clown being chased by a student with a beer bottle. You see? Mm Mm-hmm. Some people are not going to allow you clowns to chase them or to intimidate them or to threaten them. They're going to come back at you and oh, you're yeah. going to get hurt. Yeah. Here's a here's a timeline of the latest incidents in the UK as of, uh, let's see, Tuesday the 12th. In Blackburn, a man has been left permanently disabled in the first reported killer clown injury. This uh, poor guy, Simon suffered severe injuries to his right hand as he defended himself from a frenzied clown knife attack. A violent thug wearing a green wig and a face paint slashed the 28-year-old with a 10-inch knife, severing four ligaments. Mm. Uh, The victim said, I have never been as petrified in my life. Wow. On the 11th, I'm not going to even pronounce this, somewhere Mm. there, UK, an 18-year-old joker became the first person in the UK to be fined for dressing up as a killer clown. And look at his face here. Yeah. He, he just, uh, he's just a young kid. He's stupid. Clean he's cut, dumb. short hair. Yeah. Dumb as a box of rocks. Just dumb. And then look at how he looks with the clown yeah, thing. See? see, you can't see past that max, m- no. mask to see that it's just a stupid kid. No. Mm-mm. Now, it's a bad deal. Connor Jones was handed a uh, penalty after loitering outside some place. He's a jobless teenager. He boasted on social media, just had a $90 fine for my clown antics. Ha ha ha. ha. He thinks that's funny. Well. Huh. A killer clown was knocked unconscious when his would-be victim fought back. Good. But they, they say that this video may be a... Hoax. hoax yeah because it's it was posted on a hoax site oh. which kind of makes sense that mm-hmm. uh, who's going to be filming this and all of a sudden a clown drops you know out of nowhere yeah. and scares somebody anyway uh, that may or may not be true that he got hit in the head with a bottle two men dressed in clown masks masked left ellis ellis slatery and her two children petrified the men brandished knives at the family as their car stopped at traffic lights and one even climbed onto their bonnet, which I guess in the UK the is their trunk. Or yeah. it's, I think it's their trunk. Oh, their trunk. Okay. Yeah. Their boot or, or their hood. I don't know. Top of the car. Beats me. They speak another language over there. 
Alice 28 beeped her horn as her daughter screamed, prompting the clown to jump down from the car. Really? You're going to actually put your body on somebody else's property? Mm -hmm. You're going to put your stupid clown body on somebody's car? Yeah, that's a little too much. A second man was standing behind the car holding a suspicious object. Wow. Uh, Some other person also reported seeing the clowns at the same set of traffic lights. He said that another driver raced through a red light to avoid the men and said it definitely freaked out some people. Wow. See, that's just... That was just on the 11th, by the way. On October 10th in Kent, an old man was terrorized by a knife-wielding clown while walking his dog through a park. Mm. He said the prankster was brandishing a severed head and laughed manically as he accosted him. The 73-year-old sought refuge in a nearby pub. He said, I understand these people are having fun, but I have a heart condition and a weak bladder and do not find it funny. See, that just really makes me angry. Mm -hmm. On the 8th, a prankster scared a pregnant woman so badly that she went into early labor. Hmm. There was a post on Facebook that says, thanks for the concern about my friend. She was eight months pregnant and had a stupid 17-year-old kid jump out on her dressed as a clown. The baby came early, but mother and baby are doing good. Please, please think. Old people and pregnant ladies aren't the best to scare. It's nonsense craze that needs stopping. Yeah. Um, That's awful. That just really annoys me. Yeah. Uh, In England, there's some footballer's son was reportedly... Um, ex- he faces expulsion from a top private school after a social media stunt led to eight schools being evacuated. Wow. The boy confessed to making posting warnings on an anonymous Instagram account, which has since been deleted. The source said he was suspended when it all came out, but it looks like he may end up getting expelled as it's not the first time he's been in trouble. It seems a bit harsh to get rid of a kid for clowning around and he wasn't the only one doing it. But it's an expensive private school, and they don't mess about. Well, no, I'm glad. He needs to get out of yeah. there. He wants to be a clown. He's an idiot. It says that the craze started in the U.S. in August, but has since spread to the U.K. and Australia. No. Oh. The um, first reported complaint was in South Carolina, where police received a number of calls about clowns trying to lure children into the woods. Yeah, see, those clowns were never saw, or there's no video. Mm-hmm. They were never, you know... Um, since then, there has been a rash of incidents across the U.S. A man was arrested for causing public alarm in Kentucky, while in Ohio, schools were closed after a pupil posted on social media that she had spotted a clown flourishing a knife. It's unclear what sparked the craze, although many have suggested that the clowns may have taken inspiration from Stephen King's horror classic, It. The 1990 TV miniseries, Followed a murderous and demonic clown who preyed on children every 27 years. Nice. It's being remade as a Hollywood film due for release next year. Many were suspicious that the clown craze was a viral marketing gimmick for the new film, but producers have confirmed they have no connection. I don't think it is because it's gone too long and the movie's not going to be out until next year. Right. So I, what I think it is, is demon-possessed idiots, kids, Kids that have been raised with social media, mm-hmm. all this technology, video games, all this this digital stuff in their their mushy brains, they open themselves up to dark demonic forces and they behave this way. Correct. That's what you have. Mm-hmm. That's that's what societies become. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, why do I have this up here? I don't know. <laughs> This That's is, what I'm looking like. This is like an ad. Huh. Uh, how did this get up here? I don't know. So talking about killer clowns. Um, what kind of idiot would then take that craze and put that on their body as a tattoo? Oh, yeah. I mean, really, when you're talking about the food chain, mm-hmm. you're talking a bottom feeder here. Yeah. You're talking a mouth breather. I mean, really? Really? Mm-hmm. Killer clown. Kill, I can't even talk today. 
Kill a Clown craze hits the tattoo parlor as body art fans flock to get creepy inkings. New people have started getting permanent tributes to creepy clowns etched on their bodies. It's permanent, people. Permanent. Permanent evil demonic clowns etched on your body. Why? (laughs) Clowns have barely been out of the news in recent weeks with seemingly ever more horrifying incidents involving people dressed as them every day. In Sweden, a teenager was stabbed by a violent jester in the middle of the street. And Childline has reported a massive surge in calls from kids who've been left frightened by this phenomenon. Oh, those are some ugly looking tattoos. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not everyone is so scared as this new tattoo craze shows. People have been paying homage to a killer clown trend with spooky inkings etched on their skin. Folks, this is just totally demonic. This is not regular people going, I'm going to pay tribute to a demonic clown. And put an Mm -hmm. ugly demonic clown on my body. You're doing this. These people are doing this because they're demon possessed. Mm -hmm. They have aliens in them. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. They have Mm -hmm. aliens. Not from Mars. Right here. They're disembodied spirits. They're demons. Mm -hmm. And their head, their head is the serpent. Mm -hmm. The snake. It is Satan is, is the head. Right. These people are controlled demonically. Yeah, and they're having graven images tattooed on their body. And they're, and they're bringing in that energy and that spirit into themselves. This is not normal. It's not normal human behavior. It's not seed of the woman behavior. Mm-hmm. It's serpent seed behavior. They have changed their spiritual DNA to serpent seed Mm-hmm. By yielding to that carnal, fleshly man in their soulish nature. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. This ain't just a craze. It's not just stupid people. They are stupid, but it's not just stupid people. They're stupid because they're demonically controlled. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bunch of pictures of these killer clowns on people. Really nuts. Uh, an Instagram account called Realistic Tattoo Art Post or posted an amazingly intricate tattoo which is done in full color on someone's back. It showed it. The horrifying clown who's the central character of Stephen King's novel nestled in a tree and with a bunch of balloons in the background. Yeah, it's very ugly. Well, it takes up the whole back. You're going to have mm-hmm. a killer clown on your back? Uh, anyway, so people are, are, are nuts. Yeah. They're, they're and doing. Yeah. And you can go on our Facebook and look at those pictures. It's, it's hideous. Yes. Yeah. It's all up there. Yeah. Very hideous. Very hideous. I don't know what all this fuss is about, about these pestilence. I think the scientists are doing a great job. Clueless in the dark. <laughs> I think the government's doing a good job. Have no idea what is really going on? I have an app for that. Kapow Radio Show app for iPhone and iPad. Kapow Radio Show app for Android. Get the app. Get a clue. Hey, Vinny. I love politicians. I think they've got my best interest in mind. Get the app. Get a clue. FifthHookMedia.com Okay, here's a guy who was not dressed in a clown suit but did clown demonically uh, like things. Mm -hmm. I posted this because it's a perfect example of a demoniac. Right. This is a demoniac. The guys who dress as clowns are demoniacs. But here's another manifestation. Yes. Here's a very violent demoniac. Bloody man with knife is tased by the police in Coral uh, Gables. Mm -hmm. That's in Miami. Residents were put on edge after a bloodied man was carrying a weapon and he was chasing cars. Thursday afternoon, this one uh, witness says, I saw a man walking around with his tongue hanging out. Tongue hanging out. That's that's demonic. Mm -hmm. Probably winking with one eye, tongue hanging out like a dead sheep. Those who know Jonathan Cleck will understand what I'm talking about, right? Mm Mm-hmm. His tongue is hanging out, throat cut. 
He had sliced arms. He had a knife in his hand, blood dripping from the knife and from his hands. Wow. He's not in a clown suit. That's pretty scary, right? Mm. So the popo arrived, and they confronted the man. The guy was believed to be in his 40s or 50s, covered in blood, carrying a six-inch blade. There was actually blood on the officer's car because the individual was then starting to charge the officers as they arrived. Hmm. The officers with the Coral Gables Police Department deployed their tasers. Several of them did. Can you see how the officers are reluctant now? Yeah, I do. I mean, this is this. this. But it's only natural with all the attacks that they've had and their their hands are being tied by the leaders. Of course, you know, they don't have any support. You know, like mm-hmm. they're doing a good job, so we're standing by you. This is because you're doing their job. But if they're being punished for doing their job, of course, this is the uh, yeah, result, the outcome. This is a shootable offense. This is this is a justifiable deadly of force of uh, incident. You arrive, and a man who's full of blood, holding a six inch knife, is charging you. Mm-hmm. You can use deadly force. You can articulate the fear. That you're afraid, and you should be afraid, because he can close that distance very closely yep. with a knife and slash you in a little pieces. See, people don't realize that, how yeah. quickly that can happen. Yeah, it can happen very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally would probably rather really face somebody with a gun than with a knife, especially mm-hmm. if someone knows what they're doing with a knife. Right. But but a crazed maniac with a knife, I mean, they'll slice you up, my God, and be on you very quick. You need at least mm-hmm. 20 feet to fire before they can be on you. Um, that's a shootable offense, but but they they tased him mm-hmm. instead, so the taxpayers can feed this idiot, mm-hmm. keep him in jail until he keeps doing it again, and somebody you know dies. But you could see that the the police around this nation are becoming more and more reluctant, just like Ms. Kapal says, because they're going to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. They're going to be scrutinized. They don't want to lose their mortgage. Sure, they don't want to lose their families. They don't want to lose their jobs. Mm-hmm. So, but they get, you know, they get praised for this. You sure. know, the officers showed restraints by not firing their weapons and they likely saved the man's life. So that's praise for that. Yeah. But, but see, that's stupidity. Mm-hmm. When you go to these police um, reward ceremonies mm-hmm. and they get the Medal of Valor, right? every cop, I shouldn't say every cop, but a lot of the cops that get Medals of Valor, it's because they did something stupid. Yeah. Like climbing on a bridge, talking somebody down. You know, or not shooting this guy when they could, uh, they should. You know what I mean? Right. And it's usually, oh, oh, they they did really. Good. They get rewarded because they're, and they got lucky that they're still alive. Exactly, because the next time they may not be that lucky. No. After deploying their tasers several times to get him to drop the knife, they actually rendered first aid to the point where two officers applied a bronchial artery stop. Uh, to help him from bleeding out from his wrist. You see how how, how they spinning this? Mm-hmm. Now they're heroes for saving this stupid, crazy guy's life who was chasing cars, chasing people, and when they arrived, he was running after them. Are you serious? I know. And adding to the situation's difficulty, Chief Hodak said they received several 9-11 calls from people who thought it was a holiday prank, like a Halloween movie. This was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It gave me chills, said one man. Police believe the wounds were self-inflicted, and this was a suicide attempt. He was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital in critical condition. Wow. Hmm. I, if it was a suicide attempt, why is he chasing cars with yeah. a knife mm-hmm. instead of just stepping out in front of a car exactly. on the freeway? Come on. Come on. Okay, so in light of... Um, this dangerous mentality of uh, being afraid to get in trouble. And, you know, I, I'm not criticizing these cops because I no. went through it myself. Yeah, very much. I went through it myself. I um, was involved in an officer, what do you call it? A homicide. I killed a guy in 1990. So what? <laughs> what difference does that right? make now? And I went home that night. <laughs> what the- <laughs> At this point, what difference does it make? <laughs> No, I did. And I went home that night and I slept like a baby. Did I not, Miss Kapow? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I was more stressed out about the investigation than the guy I killed. Because the guy was on PCP. He was a nut bucket. He was, he was demon-possessed. 
I didn't know all that stuff back then. Mm-mm. But plus, yeah. it would have hurt you and your partner. He would have killed. I own, one you know of us I mean? almost died. Mm-hmm. Someone almost hit us in the head with a pipe, and we didn't exactly. Um, but anyway, we got in a big fight there, and the guy died at our hands. It was a homicide, and after that incident. I went through this. Mm-hmm. Um, they separated me and my partner. I, I remember going to a call and some guy grabbed my badge and almost hit me. And instead of reacting, I just kind of stood there because I it was like I didn't want to go through another scuffle again. I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. And I realized this can't happen. No. I got to go home at night. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I had it. So you sue me, do whatever you want, fire me, but I'm going to go home. That's right. You know, try me in court. I Whatever. We'll let the chips fall, but I need to live. Uh, but it's a oh. horrible, horrible mindset yeah. to go through. Um, this is, th- it was a video released after a brutal beating of a Chicago police officer. And she decided not to shoot her assailant because she was worried about the scrutiny she might face. That's right. Yep. <laughs> uh, so there's a video of it from her dash cam and body cam which was released showing a suburban man. I love that. A suburban man. He was a thug. He's a Chicago thug. He was high on PCP, just like the guy who died with me was high on PCP. And you couldn't control this guy. Yeah, they have superhuman strength. They do. We were hitting him with everything we had, and he wasn't feeling it. Mm -mm. He wasn't feeling it. Um. He was allegedly on high on PCP. He was punching and body slamming Chicago police officers as they tried to handcuff him earlier this month. More than three hours, three hours of footage of the brutal incident were released. Friday, three hours? Yeah. You're fighting with a guy for three hours? Just shows you the mentality of these police officers. Holy cow. You don't even go into an MMA fight for three hours. Mm Mm-mm. My Lord, that's the first I read that. I didn't know that. Wow. Um, The Chicago Police Department released it after authorities said a female officer who was beaten unconscious didn't shoot her attacker because she feared she might face backlash. That's sad. The attacker was a Afro-American, folks. See, and that's even... Oh, adds more to her yes. she fear. Was, yes, because she didn't want the riots. Exactly. She didn't want to get charged. She didn't want to get thrown to jail. She didn't want to be prosecuted. That's a So shame. she got beat unconscious, and she's lucky to be alive. Yeah, but the after effects of this is going to be terrible. She'll never be the same. Mm-mm. She could never be the same on the, on the street. Nope. She might as well just lock herself in her patrol car and scream for oh, help. Oh, give her a desk job if that. Yeah. She's, she'll she's, go bozo. Yeah, because she can't function on the street after this. Mm-mm. The footage begins as two officers attempt to take this guy named Huff uh, into custody after he crashed his vehicle vehicle into a liquor store. So they have a good legal right to be there. The guy is um, committed a crime. He's and he could have killed someone with his vehicle. With his vehicle, yes. So they have a good legal right to stop this guy and. Um, investigate the incident right so legally she's on good ground the officers um, were on patrol when they came across a traffic accident uh, where the guy had uh, crashed his car into a liquor store a female officer is seen in the footage cuffing uh, the guy's left wrist but is heard shouting at him to stop fighting before she can get his right wrist cuffed the officer is shouting at her partner to taser the man as both officers continue ordering him to stop fighting and get down on the ground. And, you know, folks, you know anything about PCP? Yeah, superhuman strength. They don't feel anything. You're totally infused with demons. Mm-hmm. It's a dark demonic drug. That's right. They hallucinate. Mm-hmm. They get hot, demonically hot. And you can't control these guys. And they feel no pain. Mm-hmm. At one point, the crook managed to get out of their grip, and the three then disappear from the camera's view. When they return, the crook is seen falling on top of the female officer, where he continues to fight as other officers surround him. Uh, then he, you see the, the crook continuing to punch wow. the officer while she's on the ground. In a separate body cam video, the crook is seen being shot with a stun gun numerous times before he is cuffed and on the ground. 
his mouth is bleeding. The crook allegedly beat the female officer so hard she lost consciousness. Two other officers were injured while putting him in custody. The female officer remained in the hospital as of Friday. The crook, who's only 28 years old, was charged after the incident with attempted murder of a police officer and aggravated battery to a police officer and was ordered held without bond. A father, the uh, crook is a father of one, ain't that nice, he's breeding, Mm -hmm. told a judge in court he had drugs in his system because he was in the hospital that morning. (laughs) And the hospital gave him PCP, probably a little marijuana little whiskey. Chicago. That's where Obama's from. Mm-hmm. It's Obamaville. The crook who completed cosmetology school. Oh, God. And currently works as a janitor at a chocolate factory. Also had another child on the way. Oh, great. <sighs> anyway, the top Chicago police officer, the chief has used the beating as an example of how fallout from police-involved shooting controversies can put officers in danger. You think? Yeah. You think? He says, she knew that she should shoot this guy, but she chose not to because she didn't want her family or the department to have to go through the scrutiny the next day. Wow. Wow. That's sad. That's um, sad stuff right there. Yeah, I re, I re, uh, there was there was an incident when I was um, and you saw this video. I brought it home when I was doing I was doing defensive tactics for the police department and stuff, training other cops how to fight. And you remember this uh, video I brought home? The um, what was she called? The hero of Carthage or something? It was oh, Carthage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas. And this gal, uh, a, a, a female trooper. A white gal stops a black man, mm-hmm. big black guy, uh, and this guy has a kid in the car. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was really sad, and it's all on the dash cam. And she goes up and um, and she goes and she keeps telling this guy to put his hands on the hood. Right. And now you know we use this as a we, we use all these things for training. You right. know, law enforcement will take these videos and use them for training and go. This is what you don't do. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what happened. And so you analyze I all this, this stuff. This will be used for that too. Yeah, this will be a training video. Yes. Um, so she's telling this guy get get your hands on the on the hood, and he does. But she's standing behind him, and she's talking on her radio. Her mic is on her um, shoulder. Shoulder. Shoulder mic. So she's kind of leaning over, talking on her mic. But you can see this guy in the video. Mm -hmm. He keeps looking over his shoulder at her. The lesson about that is he's trying to track where she's at. So he can launch his attack. He needs to know where she's at. So he keeps looking over his shoulder. So these are signs that she's missing. And so finally, she's just talking on the radio. And she's like, get your hands back up. He keeps taking them off the hood. And finally, he takes them off. Turns around. He's a big guy. Mm -hmm. Big, heavy guy. And hits her. Right. Oh, boom. Oh. In the face. Drops her straight back. She was unconscious when she hit the ground and bounced. Gets on top of her and continues plummeting her. And you can hear her mic. Mm-hmm. You can hear her mic and you can hear her because her nose is broken and yeah. her nasal cavities. are. And you can hear her. I don't want to call it breathing. What do you call it? Gasping. Yeah. Groaning. You can hear as he's beating a sh- the crap out of her. Mm-hmm. The little kid in his car was screaming. It was a little female, yeah. I believe, was screaming, Daddy, stop, Daddy, stop. Isn't that awful? That yeah. is just so awful. Yeah, and he almost killed her. He almost killed her. And the reason why is I think he had some uh, dope on him. Yeah. And did. I, he didn't want to go back to jail. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. these criminals don't care no. about any other human. And they'll hurt you. Mm-hmm. They don't play by these rules. No. That's why they don't go register their guns. They don't do background checks. They don't, um, you know, play by all those rules. That we do. Yeah. And that are imposed on us by the libtards. Exactly. Because of these people. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> that was, oh, that was awful. Yeah. So anyway, it's a very, very bad um very, very bad mentality to be in, and but you're you're, you're going to see more and more of that. Yeah, more of that. Some some people, some of these cops are going to be lucky and survive, and other ones aren't. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. 
Okay, let's change uh, topics here, but it's still dark demonic times because this is a behavior that's demonic. This is girly, girly man. Yeah. <laughs> De- demons are homosexuals. Mm-hmm. Demons don't like other women. They're and they homos. can be very bisexual too. They yeah. can go either way. Yeah. But they, um, it's it's this kind of behavior is demonically infused. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. Exactly. It's demonically infused. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come from good. No. So when you see this, these men being effete, um, being weak, being uh, like you know women, it's, mm-hmm. it's not right. Mm-mm. There's something wrong in their heads. Um, almost half of all men are trimming or shaving their leg hair. I don't care. You know, really. I mean, I don't. Uh, person, I don't. You know, I don't care. You got a little smooth leg. I don't care. The point I'm trying to get is is that this is indicative of our dark demonic times. Right. Okay. So there's a new word that's out, and they call it spornosexual. Spornosexual <laughs> manscapers. Um, sporno meaning that they want to either look like sports stars because some you know some athletes like okay bodybuilders yeah they shave all down they're, exactly they have to show their muscles they right shave and so it, you can see that they're professional they're professional sports people uh, swimmers uh, bicycle um, bicyclists you know all these sports golfers no. They really? probably do, so they can hit the ball. They don't have any arm hair, I don't know. But, you know, professional. So, sporn, spornosexual is a cross between sports, and guess who else shaves down? Pornos. Porn stars. So, spornosexual manscapers. That's nasty. So, you want to be either a sports guy or a porn guy. Fuji fuji. And manscape. Fuji fuji. <laughs> so, um. It's nasty. Oh. <laughs> Nasty, nasty. Spornosexual manscapers. <laughs> anyway, male hair trimming. Oh, this is from the Independent UK once again. Male hair trimming rarely concerns body hair south of the border, unless you're a professional swimmer or cyclist. Uh, but these days, average Joes everywhere are taking razors to their hairy pins. Surveying their Facebook followers, Men's Health found that while the majority of men are not completely shaving their legs, a surprising 15% are. Huh. While a further 33% admitted, I don't shave clean, but I do use a trimmer to cut it down. Oh. I never even thought of that. Hmm. Uh, Where's my weed whacker? (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try something here with a weed wagger. Uh, that's nearly half of the men polled that are tackling their leg hair in some way or uh, form. But why? Why? Um, and here's here's the poll results. Uh, somebody says that's weird. I would never touch my leg hair. That was fifty one point six percent. I don't shave clean, but I do use a trimmer to cut it down, 33.1%. It's not weird. I shave my legs frequently, 15.3%. Following the fruition of the metrosexual, its initiator, Mark Simpson, has coined the next stage of its evolution as the spornosexual. Why do they come up with these terms? It's crazy. They have nothing else to do. A group of men who strive to look like sportsmen or porn stars. A spornosexual. <laughs> Strive to look like sport. Why don't you just get out and be a sportsman? I know. <sighs> Perhaps no. this tendency towards smooth shaving buffness is behind men becoming body conscious. I doubt it. On the back of his initial survey, sister publication, Women's Health jumped on the bushy bandwagon asking their Facebook followers, What do you think about guys shaving their legs? The results showed that nearly 30% of women like a man who trims leg hair down and 22% love a man with clean shaven legs. Really? How old can these people be? I mean, that's more than half the women surveyed that responded to legscaping positively, but it's a divisive subject. So the poll said, it's weird, guys shouldn't touch their leg hair, 49.3%. Yeah. 
Um, 28.5% said, I don't like clean shaven, but I do appreciate a man who trims leg hair down. Huh. <sighs> What's the difference? So you just got stubbles? Yeah, I think. Uh, I guess kind of like your beard. I guess you can just trim your beard. It's not a full beard. It's not a full manly beard. It's just kind of one of those spornosexual beards. I don't know. Uh, twenty-two point two percent said it's awesome. I love a man with clean shaven legs. Ew. And with breasts. <laughs> I don't. Hey, I don't make it up. No, I didn't say that. I, I didn't. Unless he's that. wearing my nylons. <laughs> this guy might. This guy. This boyfriend might here. I prefer um, a man with hairy legs. I'm sorry, a spornosexual friend. One Reddit poll which proposed the same question proved that while a number of men seeking leg hair removal is rising, some women just don't like it. Yeah, that'd be Miss Capel. Yeah. She says, I think nah. I'd be weirded out by another set of spooth legs touching me. Mm-hmm. One user said, while another responded, I think I'd really need a functional reason because I like hair on my men. <laughs> Now she's talking. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like a hairy man. <laughs> the internet is awash with guides on how men can achieve the ultimate slippery smooth physique. But does anybody truly care? Obviously, Brother Kapow does because he's he's <laughs> linking it with demonic uh, mentality. <laughs> so uh, just as with women, body hair removal is a personal decision. So if you're a guy and like your legs to feel super soft and shiny, then keep on going on. Oh, anyway, I love a pizza. Um, anyway, like I said, it doesn't matter. I, I can care less if somebody shaves their legs or whatever reason they have. I'm just saying that a lot of this stuff, the idea be, behind a, 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 a spornosexual is, mm-hmm. is demonic. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of this stuff is. Right. So, you know, if you're just doing it because, hey, personally, I don't like it. I don't like the itchy or whatever. Who cares? But if it's leading to like an effeteness, you know, mm-hmm. a gayness, you got problems. Now, see, I'm kind of weird, but I like my women hairy. Oh, no way. And that's why Miss Kapow just has long hair pits. <laughs> That's hair. nasty. You braid them. Oh, you braid them. No way. That's gross. <laughs> Ugh. Here's a picture of Madonna. Oh, you see those? Oh, yeah, that was nasty. <laughs> and you know what? Ever since I saw that, she just looks really dirty to me. She looks like she smells. Yeah. Oh, okay. We better we better get off that. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. The end is nine. Last story. There are nine of the safest places in the world to survive a third world war. <laughs> this is from the uh, stupidity desk. The <laughs> stupidity. News sun. desk, the um, the sun, the sun, the sun. Yeah, how dumb can you be? News desk. The end is nigh. Okay, from the frozen deserts. I was going to say dessert. From the frozen deserts of Iceland to the built-up city of Cape Town, these places are all ideal for surviving an apocalypse. Why are we reading this? Because. Because let me go to the scripture here. Let me go to the killer clown scripture that I have. Where is my killer clown scripture? Here it is. This article is going to talk about nine best places to hide. So we're going to make fun of it because the scripture that I use for this is Psalm 32 7. And there's many, many, many scriptures, but Psalm 32 7, I liked. And it says, Thou talking about God thou art my hiding place thou shalt preserve me from trouble amen thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance amen that's the only place that's the only place that's safe that's right okay that's right so knowing that let's go down this and rip this article apart and make fun of them. All right. Okay. Hi. All right. Because we live in dangerous times and the threat of global annihilation is always lurking just around the corner. Nuclear war is always a lingering threat and recent escalations over Syria risk uh, reviving Cold War tensions between hostile nuclear powers. And we see this and read this more and more and more and more. People think we're heading to World War Three and nuclear war. And why anyone would want to survive after a nuclear 
blast is beyond me. I don't know, but I bet you won't have to shave your legs after that. Because of no, radi- because you wouldn't of have any hair. Yeah. You'd look like a... Turtle. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. But what if we told you that there are some safe havens where you'd stand a good chance of surviving the end of the world? From the frozen deserts of Iceland to the the built-up city of Cape Town, these places are all ideal for surviving an apocalypse scenario. Better get booking those flights before it's too late, because these are the nine best places to be when all goes pitong for humanity. Pitong, pitong. Okay, number one place to be... Iceland. Yes, Iceland. An insider reports... Iceland is hundreds of miles away from other lands, so it shouldn't be a target in World War III. There you go. What's more, it's a great spot for fishing, so survivors would have an abundant food supply to keep them going until the world is rebuilt. All right. Um, Never mind that it's full of ice. (laughs) That's only the two things they mentioned. Didn't I tell you this is stupid? Nine places to survive nuclear war, the apocalypse. Nine places, Iceland. There's fish under the ice, and you can eat and survive. Can you imagine all these man, all these por- porno, porno sexuals oh, they're with no cold. leg hair over they're there crazy. trying trying to hook a a, 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 a fish? They'll freeze they, to death. Well, they couldn't even bait their hook. No. <laughs> People don't know how to live off the land. No. Uh, and it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. Anyway, that's number one. Okay, number two. Isle of Lewis. Now, I don't even know where that's at. That's why it's hidden from people like you that want to be a (laughs) warmonger. Oh, it says it's the Scottish island. Scottish. And it's self-sufficient and situated three hours away from the mainland. Simply put, it's a nice enough place to live without attracting any attention to yourself. Except that you're a stupid American. (laughs) You're stupid. Stupid America chasing Pokemon Go in the Isle of Lewis. And they you're probably going to be looking for a Jack in a Box or something like yeah. that. A fast food. Yeah. It's not there. Dressing like a clown. Walking down the streets. No. You think they want you there? No. It's a nice enough place to live without attracting any teachers. You think they want you there? Yeah. Yeah. No. no. They don't want you there. Okay. The third. Antarctica. Antarctica. Is this, is this going to be nice? It may be a bit nippy, but in a worst case scenario, you'd probably be safe if you managed to carve out a life in the continent's barren waste. Is there a Starbucks there? <sighs> or a soup plantation? <laughs> Movie theaters. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this this is an article. Well, it's from the sun, so. But, you know, really, folk, really? Basically, Antarctica? there's no safe place within the urban area or the, the, no. the, the, the you know. Mm-hmm. Well, here's one. Here's one right here in a good USA. So Kansas everybody City. should go there. Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City. Here I come. They got some pretty little nuclear weapons and I'm going to get me, me one. one. Okay. In the event of a non-nuclear war, this is the place to be. Non-nuclear war. Exactly. The city is surrounded by fertile farmland and is the ideal spot to defend against attackers. Okay, here's this is stupid. And Kansas is flat, 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 okay. flat, flat, flat. Flat places. Okay, here's my survivalist stuff coming up. Flat places are not good to defend yourself, attackers. No, because if you can see your attackers, they can see you. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Kapow. You learn well. Mm-hmm. Hill country. You got to take high ground. Yes. Come on. You can't defend against attackers. It's flat. <sighs> you know what else? You know what else is there that will get you? Kansas city Mm-hmm. Okay. But if it's nuclear, it ain't going to help you. Ah. Okay. The uh, next one is the Yukon. The Yukon. It's one of Canada's most remote regions. The Yukon province is well off the grid. To make matters even better, it's a mineral-rich area, which is jam-packed with wildlife, meaning you could get rich and eat well whilst awaiting the apocalypse to blow over. Really? Yeah, you can mine stuff and get rich, but there is no economy. There's no people left because yeah, there's every, no one there to buy your no, mineral. No, but you're gonna go. You're gonna go kill a moose and you're gonna uh, uh, address it and you're going to you know then cook it and eat it because you read how to do it on the internet. 
Cape Town. They don't want you there either. No. No one wants you in Cape Africa's Town. Africa's wealthiest city. Cape Town could be a good place to hide out in comfort. There you go. Now oh, that, this is now they're so dumb. Yeah. Since the African nation keeps itself relatively clear of Western influences, so once again, they're not going to want you there. Yeah, there's your stupid little white face running around. That ain't going to work. Yeah, and it's not like you can hide. No. <laughs> there's a good chance that Cape Town will be so far out of the way that World War III won't even reach it. Really? Really? Seriously? Uh, uh, Guam. Guam. No it's thanks. an easily defendable island with a strong military presence. Oh, yeah. Like, I want to be there. <laughs> Because what you're assuming that that military presence is going to protect you. Yeah. I don't think so. And not be part of it the whole... Yeah, I don't but, think so. <laughs> Guam is a wise place to hole up if you want to survive a worldwide conflict. Oh, for the love of pizza. Here's another one. Burn. That's in Switzerland. Like fill the burn. Mm-hmm. Simply doesn't take sides, preferring to remain neutral throughout every major conflict. And Bern, the Swiss capital, is easily defensible to boot. Not that war is likely to come to Switzerland. Once again, they don't want you there. They don't take sides. So they're neutral. Yeah, and it's easily defensible. Well, who's going to defend it? Yeah. If uh, they're just sitting around shaving their legs. Now, this, this is, this is, I think this is a good one. Tristan da Cunha. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's hard to say. Tristan da Cunha. Well, because you can't say it, the warmongers aren't going to be able to find it. Because <laughs> they can't even put it on the map. But like, well, forget that one. And it's a collection of islands and is one of the remotest places on Earth and is a top fishing spot. There you so go. basically, we're going to be eating a lot of fish. Yeah, and they're not going to be radioactive. No. No, of these not. fish aren't going to be radioactive. No, of course. All not. the other fish are, but not these ones. Not these. No. We can think of a far worse places to spend the rest of the world, to spend the end of the world, than on a stunning island paradise in the middle of nowhere. And how are you going to get here? Uh, they didn't address that. No, they didn't. Okay. And if the fear of nuclear annihilation is keeping you up at night, you should probably check out our guide on how to survive a nuclear attack. Well, uh, if, it's any, if it's anything like this article, mm, yeah, not good. No. That's, uh, that's like the stupidest article Ever. Ever written. And once again, why we read it is to make fun of the stupidity of it. There's one place to hide. Psalm 32, 7 says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me or compass me about with songs of deliverance. Amen. 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 Verdad? Verdad. So that is it. Um, I've done enough body shaming. I feel really spornophobic. <laughs> and um, You not use my shaving. I'm not going to use your shaving. And I'm afraid of killer clowns. And I want a killer clown tattoo. I'm all messed up now. Under these well, dark demonic times. I'm going to make you times. some fish. How does that sound? Oh, radioactive fish? Radioactive fish. Okay. What's well, right. kale and everything? Oh, kale and everything. <laughs> mm, sound good. Rice. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> All right. All right. So then uh, I shall say ciao, babies.